it's a, it's a little meta, you know, I would say, but I think everyone deals with their ego. I think we're just not honest with it. And I think once an artist deals with their ego, it's like kaput, like it's done. The art can't really uh, be created anymore because you're worried about what people want, what people think. And that's all ego driven a lot of times where we want to, our ego wants to be the loudest one in the room. However, like art comes from the most intimate places where we are healing, you know? <laughs> Do you have a girlfriend? Um, nah, no, not in the moment. Really? Huh. Any particular reason? Can I take a little break? Taking a heartbreak? <laughs> That's what they call it. I hate this so lonely. Damn, I hate this moment. We are back here on the zoo, and I got someone who's from my hometown. Uh, he's a very talented artist, filmmaker, at Ty Hodges. Welcome to the zoo, my man. Woo! Okay. Yeah. So, so who do people tell you that, they, that you remind them of? I mean, so many different. It just depends. It's... <laughs> this might have been before your time, but do you remember the music artist? It was a Terrence Harvey. I, I think know, was... everyone always said, that's one. It's him. Da -na 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 it's like... wishing yeah. well and kissing <laughs> yeah, that's, that's 90s. Who was yeah. the other one? That's 90s. Uh, People say, I mean, it depends when I have short hair. They'd be like Chris Tucker. Then when I had like long, then people like always go to like little, little Lenny, like a little Lenny Kravitz brother. I mean, it just mm -hmm. depends. Those, on that's what, what I see. I don't see Chris Rock, man. Is that what you said? Chris, Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. No, I don't when see When I had yeah. short hair, like that that guy. No, but I'm just me, yo. Go, go to the old school Terrence. <laughs> no, of course, yeah. you're Ty Hodges. So enough, enough of these other yeah. people that. No, no, that, no. That I get it. There's references, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm just trying to. I'm not trying to be anybody but me. Hell yeah, Ty. That's right. There you go. So um, you're a very multi-talented artist, but you put out this movie called Venus as a Boy that I, I saw a few clips of. You can see it on, uh, you know, on Instagram. There's a page that mm -hmm. you can follow. Tell mm -hmm. us what the movie's about. Uh, yeah, the movie's about like basically like uh, a look into the discovery of your own healing process from a masculine standpoint. Mm. I think a lot of times on screen we don't see men healing, so I was very deliberate to write a film about like, of course, a struggling artist that falls in not a love, but the journey is to fall in love with himself and to really understand uh, it's okay to balance out your masculine and feminine within and learn how to engage women in a very like way we don't see often, which is a woman a lot of times can't hurt a dude's feelings or whoever, <laughs> but you know, but it's also like, I wanted to make a movie that kind of breaks some sort of ideas or stereotypes we see. So. It's very diverse on many levels. And you wrote it, you directed it, and you started in it, right? Mm, yeah. And it also touches on addiction, mm -hmm. um, which is always interesting. But I love that it touches about the battle with one's ego. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Which I think we all. It's a big yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that something that you struggled with? Like, where does that? Where did, what inspired that? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a little meta, you know. I would say, but I think everyone deals with their ego. I think we're just not honest with it. And I think once an artist deals with their ego, it's like kaput, like it's done. The art can't really uh, be created anymore because you're worried about what people want, what people think, and that's all ego driven a lot of times where we want to, our ego wants to be the loudest one in the room. However, like art comes from the most intimate places where we are healing, you know? Mm. So yeah. that's kind of like, I wanted to try to figure how to put that into a film within this guy's journey of like, you know, falling in love with himself. Hey, so much emotional maturity. <laughs> I'm an emotional like, guy. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you know, it's, 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 I think it's cool to be sensitive and be yeah, sure. to what you, what you want to do or who you are. That, I mean, that, for me, that's, that's, you know, I've been, I, I talk a lot about like the spiritual journey I've been on, you know, at this, in this part of my life. Um, a lot of it is, you know, I kind of was raised in a Christian Catholic family and I was too, rebelling yeah. against that, right? I was like, oh, come on, you know, this, this is, I, I don't even buy that this version of God to the point that, I, I don't think I was ever atheist, but I was definitely agnostic. And then when I started discovering other forms of spirituality, the sacred feminine, going into like psychedelic realms and going into like your emotion and your spirit, mm -hmm. it helped me balance out a lot of things. So tell, tell us a little bit more about what the central character in Venus is a Boy is going through aside from some of these like, you know, uh, major themes. Well, I think expression, right? Like, what artists, we don't have to realize, like, once we put it out there, we don't own it anymore. Mm. And I think a lot of times it's like, my art, my film, my... So I know as a creative, I've experienced that where you're, you're like, 
you're losing the intention of why you're putting it out mm -hmm. and then allowing it to land. So I think the artist goes through that. I also think the artist goes through, you know, when you are uh, a person of color, uh, you always have to kind of operate from that creative space. Like, so if you're black, it has to be black. If you're Latin, it has to be black. If you're eight, like, it, like mm -hmm. our art can't just be fluid, you know, and be, and it be impactful. Because if you look at art, a lot of people that created didn't matter what color they were, it didn't matter what gender there was, they just created. And so I think in the film, he goes through that like evolution of like realizing like, is he gonna accept himself and allow, you know, himself just to be, or is he gonna feel like he has to like create from a space just because he happens to be in this box of like black artists, this and that. So it's really like a look into how we look at people also relationships, the, his best friend, Hunter's best friend, is played by Trace Lissette, which is an incredible actress, and she's a trans woman, and in the movie we never mention it. So just to see, a, you know, a character like Hunter, best friends with a trans white woman, and they're both going through the same thing in life, to me, it was me as a, as a storyteller to make an effort to kind of allow us to look at each other as human beings versus like limiting our experiences by what we look like. Mm. So that's kind yeah. of like, it's a very simple piece, but it's intentional with like heart and how do we relate to each other. I mean, that itself has it ahead of all this like Hollywood industry, I mean, you, know? you know? Like you're ahead of the current right now. Tell that to somebody that needs a bite. You know? <laughs> um, but then also too, it's like, you know, where are we looking at with storytelling and how are we gonna progress? with each other and treat each other as human beings. Definitely. What, have, what have you learned about yourself through telling this story? Yeah, that's a good one. I learned that if I wrote it, I gotta back it up. <laughs> <laughs> right. I learned that, you know, all these feelings that I had and I put into the script, you know, I have to back it up now. And I have to like understand what I wrote and what's gonna go out into the world. Mm -hmm. And hopefully touch people. So is filmmaking the main, you know, medium that you work with? Or what else? You, because I know that you do a few other things. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, your other art? Yeah, I, I just started making music. My brother composed the entire film, and I made music and put it in there. And all this was like the music happened first, and I was like, I want to write a movie. And so, it was kind of like an evolution to where it's, I paint. I like to cook. I think that's the thing. I, I don't ever want to feel like I'm just doing things to be like. Me, 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 I, I, I. I think you just do what you feel. And for me, I just always wanted to create things. I love creating great conversation. I love creating food. I love, so I think as I, as I continue to grow as a, as a creative, I wanna just keep exploring different aspects of myself and not being limited to like what mm. people wanna want from me. You know, and, and at a time when, uh, when, <laughs> when people are trying to like be, break out of their limitations, it seems like society keeps on adding different limitations. Yeah, no, you're right. So like a, someone like you, an artist like you, kind of gives people permission to break out. I hope so. I hope that everything that I do gives people a freedom to be like, oh, I could do that too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what, why we're on this earth, to yeah. inspire so we got people do. I remember I was on a set one time um, and I was like doing background work. And so then the main guy comes up and he's like, oh, so what else do you do? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, a creative always has many outlets. Mm. You know, and I was like, you're right, because I also like to dance, but I never saw it as like, together in my form of expression it was like it was this outlet i never like yeah you're right all these forms are part of me my entity yeah. now in the last block we were talking about how the idea for the film came from music originally so yeah. did that become a soundtrack for the film Absolutely. and what did the music originally sound like that you were able to extract a whole music uh, movie from it uh that's a good question because at the time that i was I, I recently sold a show and i was like a TV show as a writer, and to me that was like one wow. of the biggest things wow. that, I, yeah. that I was able to experience, and I never thought I could do that. And so after the show didn't go through, I think like every creative is like, man, I put so much energy and I put the opportunity it's on a pedestal. Baby. Yeah. Now what am I gonna do? And so I started making micro movies after you know my Disney Channel and acting career. Um, I started making movies, and I was like, you know what? Let me get back to that. But I also didn't know if I wanted to write and know where I was at. And I think it's really good when you're a creative and you don't know what you want to do. Even in life, like when you make those amazing turns, it's the micro decision that helps you get to that next or the failure that you really build character. So I was like, I want to start something new. And I was like, I'm going to buy a guitar. I'm going to learn something new. I make movies. I'm just going to get a guitar. And I got a guitar and I was like literally just learning on YouTube. And like, I just was like playing these chords. And then my brother, he's a musician. He heard it. He goes, yo, this is kind of dope. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I kind of have some notes I wrote in. I was thinking of turning them into songs. 
And if you read these notes, they're like a little, they're, they're very, uh, you'll be like, Ty, you okay? <laughs> um, and that was the na first name of the song, Am I Okay? And so from there, I just started experimenting and falling in love with something new, a new craft. And I just, the texture of the music made me be like, wow, this is kind of what I'm feeling. Like, what if a character was feeling that? And so I literally went back to the heart and was like, what do you want to do? And then I was like, Venus is a Boy was the first title because it was a Bjork song mm. that used to play all the time. I went to art school in Miami. So, you know, every lyrical dance, a modern dance was to Bjork. So I remember this girl told me that this song reminds me of her. And I was like, Venus, what do you mean? Like, I took it offended. Like, boys don't live in Venus. And so it just, she, she said, like, this song makes me feel like you. So I realized, like, there's, like, some boyhood stuff that needed healing. Uh, and then the mu it, ca it came from the music and then the title. And then I just wrote it. Just all wrote tied the together. Movie. It's a great title. Like, literally yeah. going. Yeah, yeah it's, I can't give, cr you know, it's Bjork's, you know. But, <laughs> right. Um, but, 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 but you made it mean something very, very heavy to you. Yeah, especially, yeah, because it's funny because they're like, oh, Venus boy, who's the boy? I'm like, they're like, you're the boy? I'm like, yeah, I'm the boy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, hopefully yeah. it like, gets you know, a word out there of like what that terminology does mean. And I directed the song to the texture of the, of, I directed the film to the texture of the song. Mm. So the way I shot it was very much like all the lyrics kind of from a visual standpoint because I couldn't afford the song. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, gra there's of, a lot of gravity. I tried, I was like, Bjork, what's up? Like, <laughs> you, I wrote her a beautiful letter. I don't Can even know if you got it over, letter. please read it. Um, yeah. But yeah, maybe it worked out that the song wasn't in the movie. Yeah, yeah, it might, it might, might have overshadowed in a certain degree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if maybe in a future gonna... iteration, right? Yeah. Who right. knows? Like, maybe she plays at the premiere. Ex yes. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. she's out there We can't limit doing... ourselves. No, it's never a no. It's a who Gotta knows. have faith. You know, exactly. Nice. Um, I've always wondered, what is it like to direct and also star at the same time? You know, because in my mind, I feel like I'm super scattered. I can only focus on one thing. Are you, like, constantly thinking of both angles at the same time? Like, you as an actor, and then you as a director, and then you're like, okay, like, yeah. how do I merge? No, it's called control. Yeah, no, that's no. what I'm, <laughs> no, I mean. No. Exactly, I have no, no. control. <laughs> um, it's very, it's easy for me. I've been doing this as a kid in Miami, like, Kendall, like, so I think it's, I, I think art is of service, too. And I, and, I, and I love being able to get, like, an artist to a place where I'm, like, like right where I want them, and I just adapt. So that's kind of how I'm able to direct. Like, mm. I cast people that I really uh, am kind of fascinated by and then I'm like into, like I just like who they are and I just try to find the truth in them and then I just mold to what it is. So it's very easy. I think the complication of it is being prepared and like understanding your shot list mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. visually understanding the, the, the deep language you're trying to communicate through these images. Yeah. So I think I make the movie in my head already and it's just about me communicating it to each crew member to be like, yo, do your thing. You know, it's so weird seeing your face. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I've been in the house, you know, it's pandemic, yeah. so everything's yeah. Zoom interview, and you're yeah. like, yo, why are you over there? And it's like, oh. It's yeah. <laughs> well, we're trying to be safe, but uh, no, hopefully it. we're getting, we're ho safe. hopefully we're turning the corner, but we've been saying that for like a year, so we'll see what happens. But I wanted to tap into, you know, you mentioned growing up in Miami. I grew up, uh, I, I consider myself a Kendall kid, even though I grew up around, you know, 117th and Bird, so like in between Kendall and like Westchester. Tamiami. Tamiami, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tamiami. Um, so, you know, we were talking about, he went to a very well-known school for the arts, New World School of the Arts, okay. produced a lot of people. Um, I went to a prep school, like, well, all the Cuban kids went to. <laughs> but um, you, you're probably the chillest guy that ever came out of Miami. Really? You like, think so? Well, well, well <laughs> yeah, for this I interview, like very for this out. interview, but growing up in Miami, was, was, it, was it very, like, how did you feed off the frantic, you know, Latin, very Latin, it's very Latin, very black energy, you know, it's a very multicultural city, but it's a very caffeinated city, yeah. a lot of Cuban coffee. Yeah. How did you feel growing up in that, in that environment and then coming out to a place like California where there's a lot of things going on, but there are moments where you can kind of like slow down a little bit? I'm still a Miami boy. Like, I'm Caribbean like, too, you know? Twisted, so please. Caribbean cold, that's the thing about Miami is like, your family's from somewhere if you live in Miami. Mm -hmm. No matter how blue your eyes are, no matter how dark you are. You're like gonna speak Spanish and that. So I think that, I love that environment to where it was all immigrant. Like I'm first generation American. Family's from Barbados and Trinidad. So it was just good not being around people that just see you as one race. Mm -hmm. We all were like share food, share this and that. But it was popping. Like we, I would like be in the streets, like making money off of car washes, mm -hmm. going to Hot Wheels, dancing in the middle. Yes. Yeah, like dancing in the middle, take off your shoes. Hot Wheels was a skating rink where they were yeah. playing wow. a lot of bass yeah. music. Is that what it was yeah. called, Hot Wheels? Hot yeah. Wheels. What? And it was like booty shaking all day, all yeah. wow, and like 
little they had those little Nine Nine Gems concert, and yeah. then our that family's like, so I know my like I'm completely that dude. I think L. A. Coming out here, the weather was um, a good adjustment, but the people were just very different. The weather was a good adjustment because we grew up in a very hot, humid place, and out yeah. here it was like, oh, it's not that humid. We're yeah. not sweating just and standing when outside. When it rains, it's sunny, and it's like here when it rains, it rains. You got to put on some Nirvana or some That's Sarah hilarious. McLachlan, uh, Fiona Apple, and just be like in the rain here. So where Fair do we go from here? We got a, we, we only got a minute left, but like, well, how can how can our audience help support Venus as a boy oh, getting yeah, out there? Sure. To, and obviously, you have an Instagram page that people can follow and watch yeah. clips of. But how can we help? Uh, uh, you know, make it you know a big thing. Well, I appreciate you guys having me first mm -hmm. of all, and I appreciate you even giving me the space to say Venus as a boy is going to come out uh, September twenty fourth. And we're having a big premiere in LA, the 22nd, so you guys come out and be hey. a part of that if you're there. Awesome. And uh, I don't know, interview people will be on the red car, but just come and hang out. <laughs> but it's a film that you can follow. It's gonna be on all the major you know, players where your credit card's already in line. No, right. And so Lost Ones, <laughs> our production company, is now stepping into distribution with this film and, and allowing this film to be our first of many and really just get the movie to the people. So and uh, I'm, just, I'm just hoping that it lands with people's hearts and People talk about it. Awesome. Hey. And where can people follow you on Instagram? Uh, people can follow me at the Ty Hodges uh, on Instagram, at the Ty Hodges, and they can follow Lost Ones, which is our production company, and yeah, and see what's up. And then we like be Instagram <laughs> friends. Brother, you are the coolest guest that we've had in a long time. It was an introspective like, like, conversation. He's like, see, what's up? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I love, let's, let's get to know each other. Yeah, hey, I love the vibe. Instagram. I love the vibe, man. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think our audience would really resonate with what you're doing, man. And Thank you. Uh, Thank you guys we for definitely want to keep supporting. and hope you come back uh, on your next project as well and yes. let us know about that, man. Yes. All right, and thanks to our, our mutual friend, yes. Jill Rodison, for hooking us up. Um, she's a badass babe. Uh, and she has a lot of muscles. She's a woman with a lot of muscles. <laughs> I want her in my next movie, actually. Hell yeah. <laughs> so this was like us working, making that step.